What up guys, this is Kalo. I'm here to give you the lowdown on all things wrestling. Welcome back to the Running the Ropes podcast, episode 3. EC3? EC3. Trouble, 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 trouble. Trouble, 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 trouble. We are going to bring you some interesting news developments here on Running the Ropes podcast. We're kind of late on it, but, you know, better late than never. Well... We're we're a little like a little like about four or five days late. Well, we won't talk about it. We we won't talk about that. But we're gonna be talking about two oh five live and what has happened over the past few weeks in this division. We have had a change in wrestling and we have had a change in character development as of late, and that is all owed to Vince McMahon giving up the showrunner rights to Triple H, and now Triple H has full control of the show. Well, now a lot of people are saying that, because Vince McMahon, the only reason why he gave up, because he's focused more on XSFL, Mm -hmm. that's coming out in 2019, to run, so he doesn't have to run it. So now, Vince McMahon was only interested in the character development. Triple H said that it's going to be more of the action, like the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah, the Cruiserweight Classic, which took place two years ago now? Two years now. So he said that it's going to be more like that. And it kind of shows that it is. Because with the tournament coming up now, mm-hmm. it's showing more action and more than character development. And thank God, um, Enzo Amore, because all he was, ju- was just a character. character. He, he wasn't anything too special. And so I think because of him, there is a changing of the guard. Maybe Neville comes back. I want Neville. I could see that because at Neville was that NXT darling from Triple H. And with this focus more on wrestling, Neville was a very good wrestler. Yeah. Most underrated. Very underrated. And he was, wasn't was treated as well as he was back in the day when he was in NXT. So Well, that's because Triple H was the head writer over there, and that was his baby. So maybe he could NXT, yeah. Yeah. So recently, we are we have been involved in this 16-man tournament that culminates at WrestleMania for the currently vacant Cruiserweight you, Championship. Yo, Vacant had the U.S. title, had the Cruiserweight title. He, he's strong. He's going in. We are inducting Vacant into the WrestleMania Running the Ropes Podcast Hall of Fame. He's the number one. He is the first entry because he just wins yeah. everything. Yeah. He can win the women's championship. He can win the, the men's, he has the cruiserweights. He, does, he has it right now. But we are involved in this tournament where we have seen the likes of Roderick Strong. We've seen Tyler Bate. We just seen Mark Andrews last night appear on 205 Live. We have been getting a lot of surprises, which is great. That's what keeps you coming back. Like I said on episode two, I want to watch 205 Live now because there are people who are debuting in this tournament that I want to see more of, like Roderick Strong. Love Roderick Strong. Mark Andrews from the UK division. I love the UK division. Tyler Bate was on the first episode of this tournament. So they keep me, like, I want to watch this. Yeah, what no, are your I thoughts on that? that? You know, like I said, I wa- my first episode of the NXT, I'm oh, no, sorry, not NXT, Tour 5, was when Drew Maverick. Drake Maverick. Drake Maverick came up because they, were, they said that the general manager was going to be announced. And, you know, having a tournament and you just go nuts about it, I'm excited about it. All these surprises. Turn- I'm not too excited about um, having the NXT call-ups and putting them in there. I think that's kind of wasting their talent. The UK, I'm fine with because they're not doing anything with the UK division. Yeah. So I'm 100% fine with that. But the NXT, like we just found out J- uh, Murphy from Blake and Murphy. Yeah. He just got called up. And I'm fine because he wasn't doing anything too special. I completely forgot about him, to be honest. Yeah. So, you know, I'm all fine by it. But people like Roger Strong, people like even NXT people, I don't want them in the 205 Live. Yeah, um, with Murphy, that's a weird situation because he was once in that Blake and Murphy tag team with Alexa Bliss. And he was, he's been doing the cruiserweight-type gimmick. Yeah. He was like the best-kept secret or something in NXT. And that that I can see as a call-up to keep him on 205 Live because maybe that gives him a better platform. And he's not a bad wrestler. You've seen yeah. the tag team matches he's in. And I think that he can hold his own there in 205 Live. Now, what's interesting here is... And this is a matchup that happened last week, which was Hideo Itami versus Roderick Strong. Spoiler, Roderick Strong won. And Hideo Itami, a guy that they were billing to be coming up to 205 Live, he just kind of got the short end of the stick here. I mean, I think it has to do with his injuries and the fact that they really, like, you can't trust someone who gets as hurt as much as he does. So, Roderick Strong, maybe. I don't see him winning the tournament in any way, shape, or form. But I can see him 
progressing in a better way. I don't know if that means him going to the final round because maybe he's an underdog, but I do see him being a formidable force in the tournament. But I just don't understand how Hideo Tommy lost. But I can tell you what. This week we had the matchup of Akira Tozawa versus Mark Andrews, who is a part of the UK tournament. And then we also had the, the Drew Gulak versus, uh, what is it, Tony Nice? Yeah, Tony Nice in this in this weird type of matchup that we never really got. The Zo train finally broke up. Yeah. Did you see Drake Maverick? He's like, last week he was saying to Drew Gulak, he's like, oh, you were once the most fierce gr uh, grappler in all of the Cruiserweight Classic tournament. He said something about Tony Nice where like, you're the premier athlete. That train has left. Like, maybe he was getting a subtle jab at Enzo Amore. Yeah. I don't know. But what are your thoughts on someone like Mark Andrews going over Akira Tozawa in this tournament? See, Mark Andrews, I don't know a lot about him. Yeah. Akira Tozawa, I don't care about him. Yeah. So, like, I really didn't care about this match at all. I'm like, thank God. I was upset when Akira Tozawa beat Neville on Raw for the Cruiserweight title. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know why they did that. Why? Yeah. So, that was really pointless. So, I, like I said, I don't care. Yeah, and Drew Gulak beat Tony Nice um, last night, actually, on 205 Live to progress in this tournament. Me, we were talking about this and um, before we went on, and um, I like Drew Gulak. Yeah. I really like his character. I haven't, I haven't seen him in the Independence, but I love what he's doing now. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so I want I, – I know it's not going to be Drew Gulak, but I want him to go all the way to the tournament and win the Cruiserweight title because I'm a big fan of Gu No Phillips and Gulak. Yeah, right now we are recording this on February 14th, so we don't know if anyone else is going to debut in the next coming weeks besides Murphy that we just seen last night. Right now, I think the favorites in this tournament have to be Cedric Alexander, who was supposed to be facing uh, Enzo at that pay-per-view yeah. before the, that whole situation happened. And I could see Drew Gulak going to the top. Yeah, those are Those would be my two picks unless somebody debuts at, like, Blows the roof off the place. Like I don't know, unless Neville comes back, maybe. Oh, I want Neville. Neville versus Duga. Like, they're teasing up that Gulag like, turning it on, turning on Neville. Yeah, I can definitely see that happening. Unless maybe Pete Dunn. Ooh. Because they're having all these cruiserweights or from the these, UK from the UK. The bruiserweight. He yeah. was on two five live that one time on Raw. Yeah. So if you want to get more eyes on the program, people like Pete Dunn, throw him into this tournament. You're not doing anything with them. You just gave him a title. That's it. Which I'm kind of upset about. They're not doing anything with the UK division. I love the UK division. That yeah. we can do a podcast on that. Let us know if you guys want to see a UK based podcast about the WWE's division there. So two o five live now is in the hands of Triple H. Do you see this turning into an NXT esque? aura you know how like whenever you watch a takeover there's just something about it the atmosphere about it yeah it's, no 100 percent. it's in the air um i hope it becomes like a nxt i wanted to treat it like the cruiserweight Cl actually i don't want it like an nxt i want it as the cruiserweight classic yeah because you got you had a guy like a koto ibushi yeah. who was like the best wrestler in the world like at that time obviously aj styles was there but well, that's a whole different argument but there was very big talents coming to this division just to fight in that, uh, ta not the tag team classic, the cruiserweight classic. And you got a guy like TJP who won, fine, but you had a lot of serious names from the indies come to this division. Yeah. And if you get back to that, maybe WWE has something here, the thing that they wanted originally. What the cruiserweight should have been. Yes. When it came back. Exactly. And when they got back, everybody thought it was going to be like the cruiserweight classic. Nope, it was not at all. Multi man nope. tag team matches, battle royales, all that. I hope at this very reserve Samanium, the cruiserweight match, who whoever makes it to the final, is a lot of match. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I, now, the only. And then you have Neville come in, if he doesn't d return in the tournament. Come in, push their ladder off, and take the title from there. Dude, they should do like the Hardy spot, yeah. like they did last year, where it's like, oh, we got one more contestant. That would be amazing. That would get the whole because no one's hearing from Neville. Neville's still employed with the WWE. You have him just come out like that, the whole crowd would lose it. Yeah, because if I don't see him in this tournament, like in the next coming weeks, because we got until WrestleMania, yeah, I can definitely see that happening. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them because technically. He should be owed something. Yeah. For cause dropping the title, Enzo was just. And he and he put he did so much for the cruiserweight class cruiserweight two hundred five. Yeah, he did a lot for two hundred five live, and mm -hmm. he was arguably one of the best wrestlers 
on Raw and SmackDown. Like yeah. he can hang with AJ Styles. Like Finn Balor, he can hang out with Seth. You know? He can do everything. And if he, if he doesn't debut, or if he doesn't come back and do, like does something major, like I'm talking on Raw, maybe go on SmackDown, win a title, or win this whole tag or not the tag tournament. Why do I keep calling it the tag tournament? <laughs> if he doesn't debut again in this cruiserweight tag tour tag tournament i think you just want a tag I'm, team tournament i'm turning into teddy long and i'm hada, hada, you're facing the undertaker pal. i'm facing the undertaker in a tag team match but this cruiserweight uh <laughs> about to tag team tournament right? this <laughs> cruiserweight <laughs> tournament so yeah this cruiserweight tournament is going to be ending at wrestlemania we're going to see a new cruiserweight champion no matter what no matter what yeah. it has to end unless rockstar spud wants to make it go on longer <laughs> That about does it for this episode, episode three of the Running the Ropes podcast. I hope you all enjoyed. And if there's any topics you want us to discuss, whether it be New Japan, whether it be WWE, whether it be ROH, let us know. Or wait, or TNA, a.k.a. Impact Wrestling, a.k.a. JFW, a.k.a. AKA TNA. What, what are they called now? Uh, who knows? I don't know. You let us know. What do you think TNA's next name should be? And let us know if there are any wrestlers you want us to talk about. Give us our top 10 list, maybe, and pretty are much we, anything else. Are we, we becoming SmackDown? Top 10? Top 10. Top 10. The perfect 10. Ty Dillinger. Ty, he's numbers. He's all, dude, from 1 to 10, he's, t- he's in it. He's always 10. Yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Ten. Please like and subscribe and let us know. Who do you think is going to be winning this tournament? James Ellsworth. You, you could be. Never know. All right, guys, running the ropes. That is it. See you next time.